Hey guys, this is going to be an improvised video log with me just talking on a static background. I've chosen Leia's background for a very specific reason because she's one of the best and strongest characters, I believe, in uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Today, I saw the movie for the first time. Of course, there will be several more from me in the coming days and weeks, but I wanted to share my first impressions. Now, obviously, I thought, should this be spoiler-free? video log with some thoughts and suggestions for those of you who haven't seen it, or should it contain heavy spoilers or something in between? And I think something in between with light spoilers, just like the title says, would be the most beneficial because I would be uh, allowed to say some things that made a huge impression in me while watching it for the first time again. But why am I repeating this? Because it means that I uh, haven't noticed all the details as a Star Wars, as a Star Wars lore junkie. I've noticed some things and uh, I'm sure that I've missed a lot more and um, after I finish the video I'm going to start typing in Wikipedia and everywhere else looking for details. For example, what exactly is the real name of the crystal critters, the crystal creatures uh, on Crate? But anyway, this video is going to contain um, light spoilers because uh, I want to give you my thoughts and insights of how I felt after watching this movie and not telling you the plot of the movie um, as a whole. Uh, one of the things that I believe was at the same time my favorite and one of the most annoying moments is um, the fact that the movie was very chaotic. Obviously, I'm going to give you an answer to the uh, big question. Is The Last Jedi a good Star Wars movie? It's a good movie, but is it a good Star Wars movie? And yes, I think so. It does have some flaws and some uh, shortcomings, but it's very action-packed. It is, in fact, the longest Star Wars movie ever created. It's, uh, I don't remember actually, about two and a half hours, but it's so action-packed and so much is happening all together from different points of view on different sides, different locations. Uh, but all of the things are combined very nicely. And I definitely believe that Ryan Johnson um, it was the right person for the uh, middle episode of the trilogy. And I don't know what exactly he's going to create with the new trilogy, but that's far into the future for now. Uh, so why I liked the fact that it's a total chaos um, most of the time in The Last Jedi, because it's fun not knowing what's going to happen, and it's fun to be surprised on every decision made by the characters. And at the same time, it's weird because that's, to my belief at least, and I've seen all of the Star Wars movies and pretty much everything related to Star Wars, with an exception of uh, Clone Wars, of course, uh, as I mentioned many times before. Uh, as a huge fan, I've seen all of them, and I believe this is by far the most chaotic movie. There are so many plots, so many things going on here, there, and then there, and you kind of start feeling lost at some point. However, everything comes to uh, a very nice and interesting conclusion at the very end, uh, because this is a middle episode and it was announced, and supposed, following the example of Empire Strikes Back, this was supposed to be a darker episode, and yes, quite a few Important, less important, interesting, but not vital for the main plot characters die. Uh, some of my most favorite uh, and as well famous, uh, damn it, sorry, I'm too excited, and uh, famous actors and actress actually uh, took place in this movie. I was expecting more from Benicio Del Toro's character, DJ. He has a very minor role. Uh, well, minor in terms of screen time, but he actually does perform very nice. And in one of the interviews in the red carpet uh, premiere, uh, the live stream from StarWars.com, we've heard him saying that all of his performance was actually written and designed by Ryan Johnson. He didn't do anything or much uh, from himself, which actually speaks volume for the quality of Ryan Johnson and the attention to detail. Another one of my favorite actresses that, up until recently, I actually didn't know is involved with The Last Jedi, Laura uh, Dern. Um, I, I haven't seen her in many movies, but her performance in Jurassic Park is more than enough for me to remember her and enjoy her uh, being a part of st the Star Wars universe. He played a very nicely created character and a very well-made uh, side story uh, for The Last Jedi. Obviously, the main actors performed nice and uh, their characters evolved and grew up in The Last Jedi. I love John Boyega and um, I'm, I think that the Pacific Rim, the second Pacific Rim will be 
better than the first one simply because he's there. And uh, from the trailers that I've seen so far, I believe he's going to play a very similar character to Finn uh, in terms of uh, performance and the behavior in front of the camera. Um, there were a lot of things in The Last Jedi that surprised me. Some in a weird way, some in very good way. Nothing in negative way, actually. Uh, I didn't expect to see it that, that that would be a minor spoiler. I didn't expect to see Yoda appear, but it was a very well-placed appearance of the ghost of Yoda, and uh, it brought very nice uh, feeling into the scene where uh, the, the Master Jedi was actually part of. Um, what else? I've got to say that the new side character of Kelly Marie Tran, uh, Rose, was a very interesting one, and uh, even though they refused to tell us more details about about what she will be doing in the movie, we knew that she is mechanic and she rises up to a hero status, um, somewhat surprising to even herself, but to my surprise, she actually behaves exactly the same uh, way in front of the camera, in the movie, and during interviews. So I don't know how much of her true persona, of the true person behind the character actually was replicated into Rose. Um, I have to say that the, the duration of The Last Jedi feels longer, but that's probably because, uh, for the at least for me, for the last, I don't know, 30 minutes, I was thinking, okay, this is the end. And then, okay, oh, oh, now this is the end. We don't expect to see anything else. And it, everything keeps building up and more things keep happening. Um, I have to admit, in the very beginning, I was expecting um, Adam Driver's character, Kylo Ren, to, uh, to be established as a true dark side character because we needed a secure through dark side villain but instead of that no we actually see a lot of controversy uh, not controversy a, a lot of uh, uh, inner fight from Kylo he is not certain what he wants to do who he's supposed to be just like Rey although uh, with Rey we obviously know that she is that perfect female character that Disney wants everybody to love she has absolutely no flaws can you point one She's good with everything, she cares about everything, she helps everybody and puts everybody else uh, in front of herself in terms of um, uh, protecting them. The Porgs, man, those creatures are lovely. And even though the Porgs and some other things in the movie are clearly there to make sales and to benefit from the Christmas movie release. I love the Porks, and I think their relationship with Chewbacca was really well placed. I don't think Maz had um, uh, a well-deserved role, or uh, how should I say it? I don't think her role was um, uh, placed accurately and proportionally to the character and to what was uh, built up from, um, from interviews and... Um, trailers and such uh, for Masa's appearance. And uh, she did an important job by connecting uh, Rose and Finn to the uh, world-class hacker who they failed to um, introduce properly. We didn't understand actually if her hacker was actually DJ, the same person that uh, ends up uh, helping them. And um, that was a little bit confusing. Maybe I will be less confused on the second, third, and 15th viewing. <laughs> once again, this is my first impression because I've only seen the movie once. Actually, while I was walking, yeah, I decided to walk from the cinema back home because we didn't want to to, uh, to, um, to finish the evening too quick. And by the way, it's not like the, the previous time when I came home and sat in front of the PC and started recording this immediately. No, this time I actually took some time to calm down had a pizza for dinner and other things like that. Um, in terms of, uh, is the the, the, the the movie a good Star Wars movie? Yes, it is. We've seen so many classic Star Wars elements, and most of them, if not all of them, are actually inspired by the original trilogy, the one that at least the um, older, the elder, the more elder audience is used to and the one that we love, because... Pretty much every Star Wars fan that has seen the original trilogy first loves it way more than anything that has appeared after that. What is really important, and I don't know why I didn't lead with this, hopefully enough of you guys have stayed up to this point of the video to hear me say it, but it's important to mention that 
as promised, Ryan Johnson is paying a big tribute and um, a lot of the movie is about the characters' development and their feelings and it's not about the uh, special effects. Yes, there are plenty. Everything looks stunning, especially on a giant screen with uh, cool 3D effects. But the involvement of the existing characters and the introduction of new ones really, really spices up the story. This episode is all about the character development and not so much about story development. And for the last mention before I actually wrap up the video, I would like to say maybe a couple words about Snoke. First, I was hoping more from Snoke. I was expecting him to be the next emperor. Instead, I don't know what to say about that. The scene in Snoke's uh, throne room was epic and really well done. Maybe it's only inferior to looks, uh, to Luke versus uh, Kylo duo. Uh, that was really something special. I don't know how much of it was actually Mark Hamill himself. <laughs> That's a wordplay with uh, Mark Hamill's Twitter account. But uh, Mr. Hamill felt like he, he didn't uh, really perform much of the action scenes. I don't know if that's true. I haven't really done any research because, again, that would be for tomorrow and day after tomorrow uh, when things come down. Maybe after I see the movie one or two more times, I'll start digging out information how much of Mark's performance and anybody of the other characters' performances was actually uh, CG effects or uh, real stunt performances from them or for uh, from... Uh, stunt doubles and things like that. But everything in the movie was very well done. I did not like, I really, really did not like the scene in the casino. I knew I'm not going to like it, maybe because I don't like casinos in general and I'm very strongly against any kind of gambling. But that's a different topic. Tell me, have you seen the movie? What do you think? How many times have you seen it? How many times will you see it more? If you haven't seen it, I strongly urge you to go and see it. Hopefully, these spoilers that you've heard from me are minor. I did my best to keep it with the, um, within the limits and the borders of the minor spoilers. But if I failed, please forgive me. Please remember to throw in a like on the video and uh, show me your support. And may the force be with you.